This video was made possible by Mizizi International, the official African diaspora clothing brand. Visit MiziziShop.com for more information. A tempestuous scandal is currently rocking southern Africa, specifically Zambia, as its Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Honorable Stanley Kakubo, resigned hours after he was embroiled in a social media frenzy over alleged unscrupulous dealings with a Chinese businessman. This move followed the circulation of a viral video allegedly showing him and a Chinese man counting bundles of cash on a table. Kakubo is being accused of accepting $100,000 and a luxury Mercedes-Benz from the Chinese national in exchange for a copper mine he claims he owns in the northwestern province's Kasempa district. What are the facts of the case? Is Kakubo actually guilty? Why did he resign? And does this ring alarm bells about the aggressive, expanding influence of China in Africa aimed at capturing the continent's resources? Join us in today's video as we explore answers to these questions in detail. Before we dive into our topic today, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channels and ringing the bell to be notified about all our exciting future videos. Zambian Foreign Minister Stanley Kakubo has resigned after a video of him allegedly counting stacks of cash with a purported Chinese businessman sparked a social media firestorm amid China's growing influence in Africa. The video depicts two men counting huge stacks of money on a table, and although no faces are shown, social media users widely believe Kakubo is one of the men depicted. Unverified images of signed handwritten notes also surfaced on social media. One said that $100,000 had been exchanged between a Zambian and a Chinese mining company. Another, dated 8 July 2022, mentioned a total sum of $200,000. Although the names of Kakubo and a Mrs. Zhang were on the notes, they have not yet been verified, fueling further speculation about a corrupt transaction. dollars Yes, So this is how much? This one hundred and eighty. This one is one hundred and eighty. Yeah. And this one hundred and eighty. Hundred and eighty, hundred and two hundred. They are four hundred. Okay. So hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred. And then this one? Six hundred. Six hundred. And then the forty? Forty. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty. Honorable Stanley Kakubo tendered his resignation just hours after the scandal broke. He claimed his decision to resign was rooted in a commitment to maintain the government's focus on tackling societal challenges without the distraction of controversy. Kakubo clarified that while no longer foreign minister, he would continue to serve as a member of Zambia's parliament, representing the constituents of Kapiri Mposhi. Zambian President Hakainde Hakilima accepted the resignation and recognized the commendable contributions and leadership exhibited by Kakubo during his term as Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation and encouraged continued diligence in his role as an MP for Kapiri Mposhi constituency. Interestingly, in his resignation letter, Kakubo did not deny being in the video nor dispute the authenticity of the notes. Instead, he described the backlash as a result of malicious claims over a business transaction between my private family business and our business partner with whom we still have good relations. In due course, we will provide the accurate context surrounding the recent developments, 
The Lusaka Times news site quoted Mr. Kakubo as saying, Unconfirmed rumors circulating indicate that the video allegedly depicting Kakubo counting wads of cash with a Chinese businessman was released by the Chinese themselves after Kakubo shortchanged some Chinese nationals in the sale of his copper mine. These rumors claim that Kakubo tried to sell the same mine to another partner, and the Chinese, upon learning of Kakubo's treachery, released the incriminating video as revenge. Although there is no confirmation that Kakubo is in the video or is guilty of any wrongdoing yet, the optics are not good for him and the Zambian government. Indeed, it is never a good look when politicians are embroiled in shady cash transactions, especially those involving huge sums of physical cash. And this is not the first time that Mr. Kakubo has found himself at the center of such controversy. He was accused of accepting a bribe last year after he was seen leaving the office of a Chinese-owned cement company with a briefcase. Kakubo denied any wrongdoing, while the president himself defended him by stating that he had only received a calendar and a diary. Zambia's anti-corruption commission has been urged to take up the latest scandal, but it could take months or even years before the real facts of the matter come to light. Kakubo's alleged corrupt dealings with Chinese miners sheds light on the larger concern of China's burgeoning influence in Zambia and across Africa. According to reports from the Chinese embassy, over $3 billion was invested by more than 600 Chinese companies in Zambia in 2022 alone. China has also been an important international player in efforts to restructure Zambia's foreign debt, and Chinese companies are heavily involved in Zambia's mining industry which is the backbone of the Southern African country's economy. But China faces competition from entities like the European Union and G7 for access to Zambia's mines and other resources, placing Zambia at the center of a bidding war. This means that the potential for corruption is huge as large sums of money can be floated around to secure leases and licenses. The recent scandal involving Zambia's foreign minister, Stanley Kakubo, underscores the complex dynamics of foreign influence in Africa, particularly by powerful nations like China. While the competition for African resources presents an opportunity for nations like Zambia to negotiate better deals for their development, the risk of corruption looms large. African countries must establish robust regulatory frameworks and transparent mechanisms to oversee foreign investments and prevent illicit practices, strengthening anti-corruption commissions and ensuring the involvement of civil society in monitoring these transactions are crucial steps. Moreover, fostering diversified partnerships with various global players can mitigate the risk of over-reliance on a single nation. Ultimately, African nations need to prioritize the equitable distribution of wealth generated from their resources to ensure collective prosperity and guard against the pitfalls of corruption that can arise amid intense foreign competition. So what do you think of Zambia's foreign minister resigning after allegedly being caught on video accepting cash for the illegal sale of a copper mine? Let us know what you think in the comments section below, and as always, do subscribe to the new Africa channel for more informative future videos.